three days, Kim had camped on the mesa top, sweeping the valley with his binoculars. A cloud of dust headed south, told him they figured him to ride south for Mexico. He had headed north instead, into a land of sandstone formations, a camel, a tortoise, Cambodian temples, and everywhere caves pocked into the red rock like bubbles in boiling oatmeal. Some of the caves had been lived in at one time or another, rusty tin cans, pottery shards, cartridge cases. Kim found an arrowhead six inches long chipped from obsidian and a smaller arrowhead of rose-colored flint. <clears throat> Dust was falling and blue shadows gathered in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains to the east. Sangre de Cristo, blood of Christ, rivers of blood, mountains of blood, does Christ never get tired of bleeding. Christ never get tired of bleeding. The evening star shines clear and green, fair as a star when only one is shining in the sky. That's Wordsworth. It is raining in the Himalayas Mountains. It is raining in the Himalayas Mountains. It is raining on Ita Huffington. Last words of General Grant spoken to his nurse, circuits in his brain flickering out like lightning in gray clouds. Kim leaned back against stone still warm from the sun. A cool wind touched his face with a smell of rain. Pottery shards, arrowheads, rusting fish hooks. You can see there was a cabin here once. A hypodermic syringe glimpsed in the sun. Abandoned artifacts. He holds the rose flint arrowhead in his hand. Here is the arrowhead lovingly fashioned for a purpose. He fondles the obsidian arrowhead, so fragile that they break every time they were used like bee stings, he wonders. Somebody made this arrowhead, it had a creator long ago. This arrowhead is the only proof of his existence. The living things are also artifacts designed for a purpose. So the human artifact had a creator. Perhaps a stranded space traveler needed the human vessel to continue his journey, and he made it for that purpose. He died before he could use it. He found another escape route. This artifact, shaped to fill a forgotten need, now has no more meaning or purpose than this arrowhead without the arrow and the bow, the arm and the eye. But perhaps the human artifact was the creator's last card, played in an old game many light years ago. Chill of empty space, Kim gathers wood for a fire. I was traveling with the intolerable kid on the Nova Lark. We were on the nod after a rumble in the Crab Nebula involving this two-way time stuff. When you come to the end of a biologic film, just run it back and start over. Nobody knows the difference, like nobody there before the film. So they start to run it back, and the projector blew up, and we land out of there on the blast. Hold up in those cool blue mountains on the mud, a heavy blue mist drifting across the floor, and the liquid air in our spines listening to a little hi-fi jump note fixes you right to metal and you nod out a thousand years. Just sitting there in orange flesh rolls, the blue mist drifting around us when we get the call. And as soon as I set foot on podunk earth, I can smell it, that burnt metal reek of Nova. Already set off the charge, I said to I and I, immovable and irresistible. This is a burning planet. So intolerable I and I sniffs and says, yeah. When it happens, it happens fast. This is a rush job. You can feel it there under your feet, the whole structure buckling like a bulkhead about to blow. So the paper has a car there for us, and we are driving in from the airport, the kid at the wheel and his foot on the floor. Nearly ran down a herd of pedestrians, and they yell after us, what you want to do, kill somebody? And the kid sticks his head out and screams, it would be a 
pleasure. His eyes lit up like a blowtorch, and I can see he's really in form. So we start right to work making our headquarters in the land of the free where the call came from, and which is really free and wide open for any life form. The uglier, the better. <clears throat> well, they don't come any uglier than the intolerable kid in your reporter. He's a great guy, the kid, or at least he's big. But Jesus Christ, I hate him. Everyone does, that being his profession. When a planet is all primed to go up, they call in I and I to jump around from one faction to the other, agitating and insulting all the parties before and after the fact. You have to move fast on this job. <laughs>